Now before we start with the reaction, let us talk about the rate of reactions. For example, this is a aldehyde, this is a ketone. Now the question number one in this section would be, which is more reactive, aldehyde or ketone? Now reactivity and we, we, we have built up a very good notion of reaction. All of you must be understanding that reaction is nothing but electronic exchange. When we, will, when we will see the reactions of aldehyde and ketone, you will always see that someone is giving its electron to someone. Someone is giving, someone is taking. There is an electronic exchange happening basically. So if there is an electron giver, if someone is electron rich, that will give electron. Now this aldehyde and ketone have to accept electron. Now acceptance of electron will be fast, then the rate of reaction will be fast. Now acceptance of electron will be fast if the deficiency of electron is high. So you have to look which has greater deficiency of electron. Now both have C double bond O. Now this R part is having C single bond or C double bond O, bond between carbon and carbon. So mostly the R part will be non-polar in both aldehyde and ketone. So that will not be the reactive site. Right, so the reactive site will be the C double bond O because of various reasons. Reason number one, this carbon in both the part is electron deficient because of electronegativity this oxygen is pulling electron and this oxygen is becoming del minus in both the sides and this carbon has del plus charge in both aldehyde and ketone. So this carbon is electron deficient that makes it a reactive site. Another reason is both C double bond, the carbonyl group in both ketone and aldehyde has a pi bond. So the pi bond is has loose electron. The electronic density is loosely held. So that can be offered to someone which is in need of electron. So because of that pi bond, the C double bond O is a reactive site. Because of electron deficiency, that C double bond O is a reactive site. Right? There is one more reactive site in both aldehyde and ketone. And that is, uh, suppose I write propenyl. This carbon in propenyl and if I have any other ketone, this carbon and for that matter this carbon as well is also the reactive site. Why? Because this carbon, the hydrogen on this carbon is acidic hydrogen. Because when you remove hydrogen from this carbon, suppose a base comes and abstract a hydrogen from this carbon, then this carbon gains a negative charge because hydrogen goes as H+, plus, leaving its electron into the orbital of carbon. So carbon now has a negative charge like this. Similarly, if a hydrogen is abstracted from these two carbon, then these two carbon develop a negative charge, like this. Now, this negative charge can do resonance with this C double bond O. As you can see, the spy bond and this negative charge are in conjugation. So if you try drawing a re resonating structure, this you the idea is you have to bring a positive charge adjacent to negative charge. Now, br to bring the positive charge on this carbon, you have to put the electron into the orbital of oxygen. So this carbon will gain, gain positive charge, positive, negative, there will be a formation of bond and this oxygen will have a negative charge. So the RS will look like this. And similarly, we can draw a resonating structure for this. So because of resonance and because of resonance, ox the negative charge goes on oxygen and oxygen is second most electronegative element, so negative charge there is stable. So because of resonance and because of the transfer of the negative charge to oxygen, a more electronegative atom, this hydrogen is an acidic hydrogen. So this carbon becomes a reactive site. A base can come and abstract hydrogen from this carbon. So there are three reactive sites in both carbon in carbonyl compounds, in both aldehydes and ketones. And as we see the reactions of aldehydes and ketones, the reaction will be, all the reactions will be on any one of these three sites. Site number one will be this carbon. Someone would come and attack this carbon. That someone will be electron rich. And these two carbons are electron deficient. That someone is going to come and give its electron to both this carbon. That will be one kind of reaction. Another kind of reaction will be on this pi bond because it is the pi bond has loosely held electron. And the third kind of reaction will be on this alpha carbon because this hydrogen, alpha hydrogen is a acidic hydrogen because of resonance. So all the reactions will be re having 
will be having a, uh, the, the, the reaction site for all the reaction will be any one of these three. Fine? All right. But the question was, which is more reactive, aldehyde or ketone? And the answer will come from here that both are electron deficient, but we have to look for which has greater deficiency. The one which has greater deficiency, that will be having higher rate of reaction. Now, oxygen is pulling electron from both the sides, but from here, on, in aldehyde, this R group will have an electron stabilization effect. The first thing that we studied in organic chemistry was inductive effect. And we saw an inductive effect that this R group has electron stabilization effect. So, this R group gives its electron. It's mitigating the deficiency on this carbon. Similarly, in this case, there are R group on both the sides. So the electron stabilization is from both the side. So the mitigation will be more. When the mitigation will be more, then the deficiency would be less. Deficiency is less, then the rate of reaction would be less. So it turns out that aldehyde is the more reactive out of these two. That's reason number one. Reason number two is, if you look at the geometry, the geometry is like this. This is around 120 degree. Both the sides, all the three angles is 120 degree because this carbon is sp2 hybridized. And in sp2 hybridization, geometry is trigonal planar. This is how it is, 120 degree, approximately. So, so if a group is going to come and attack on this carbon, it's going to face repulsion by R group on both the sides. Right? So, after reaction, is over. Suppose this nucleophile attempted and did attack on this carbon. So the geometry will change from trigonal planar to tetrahedral. And in tetrahedral, when nucleophile exists, or any group for that matter, will have repulsion from both the R groups. So the, st the steric hindrance will be more in the product that we will get after the reaction. The product will ought to be less stable. But in this case, there is one hydrogen and one R group. So there is not the repulsion, the extent of repulsion is less because there is a hydrogen on one side and the R group, if there's a repulsion, the nucleophile can shift towards hydrogen and the hydrogen offers less repulsion and if the angle in between nucleophile and R increases, then the repulsion between R and nucleophile will also decrease. So the steric hindrance in the case of aldehyde would be less, in case of nucleophile is more. So that makes aldehyde more reactive, right? So there are two reasons. One is deficiency of electron on this carbon is more. That makes aldehyde more uh, reactive. And reason number two is steric factor. Now on the steric factor, uh, ketone has more steric hindrance, aldehyde has less steric hindrance. That makes aldehyde more reactive. So these two reasons cumulative makes the aldehyde more reactive than ketone. So that big question is solved, which is more reactive? Aldehyde is more reactive. Now let's begin with the reaction of aldehydes and ketones.